can stand here all night until you shut up if you'd like. I know the people of Milwaukee aren't very intelligent, so I'm gonna give you one more chance. It's rude to make me talk over you, so I'd appreciate a little decorum here, please, Milwaukee. Shut your damn mouth! Now that's gonna work. To answer your question, Tony, no thanks to the rude people here in Milwaukee. You didn't think I was gonna let Jungle Boy eliminate me from the Casino Battle Royal last year and get away with it, now did you? Seriously, that sounds a little petty. Yeah, yeah, it is a little bit petty, but here's the thing. Even more concerning, even more, more bothersome to me than being eliminated from that Casino Battle Royal, was the reaction of each and every one of you when I got eliminated. I am a legend in this business and I deserve, I deserve more respect than to be cheered when I get eliminated from a battle royal. Do you understand me? Not to mention the fact that Jungle Boy cost me a massive roster bonus by being eliminated and a fast track to a world title shot. So yeah, it pissed me off. But here's the thing, it got me thinking a little bit. Maybe if these people like Jungle Boy so much, I should do a little bit of background check on him, so. Well, we are live. So I decided against my better judgment to go on social media and find out a little bit more about Jungle Boy. Man, what a cesspool social media has become, especially considering the wrestling corner of social media, am I right? I mean, you got losers like these people out here tweeting away like your opinion matters, like you know anything about this business, like you know anything that goes on behind that curtain. You know nothing of my business, all right? I don't need your comments about who I should be wrestling, what title I should be going for, who I should align myself with. I'm one of the best to ever step foot in this ring. I got it figured out, thanks. That would be like me coming to the drive through window and telling you how to do your job. All right, speaking of social media. No, I'm not done yet. And if you interrupt me again, I'll tear that little earring out of your head, you got me? Like I said, Jungle Boy cost me a lot of money by missing out on that roster bonus, so I had to recoup it. And hey, in that research, I found out that Jungle Boy, yeah, he's pretty damn talented, so what I figured I was gonna do is hitch my wagon to that train and ride it until it went dry. And hey, I thought it'd be a long time. I'd just make this easy money, give him a little pep talk, come stand beside down here ring, do minimal work, and cash that big fat paycheck. That's all I cared about. No, no, don't get me wrong, you think I came back? to elevate younger talent? You think I came back to help out the next generation? No, that's bullshit. I came back here to make a ton of money, and that's the only reason. No, I hear other people out here complaining about their paychecks, complaining about money. I got a little advice for you. I got a little advice, and since you can't afford it, it's, it's gonna be free advice, so take it while you can. Try, and this goes to anybody in the back. You wanna earn my paycheck? Here's the, here's the deal. Try having a match that people actually talk about a week, more than a week after it happens. Can you do that? I'm talking the type of match, hold that microphone up a little bit. The type of match that parents sit their kids down and make them watch it over and over again. The type of match that changes the industry. The type of match they name pay-per-views after. Do that, and then you can be on my prey grade. Until then, eat my crumbs and enjoy it. Now, Jungle Boy. I said I was gonna recoup that money from you. And you do have the talent, Jungle Boy, but you don't have it here. You don't have that killer instinct. And somewhere along the way, I saw it happening. And here is the final nail in the coffin. The one time I don't give you that pre-match advice, the one time I don't walk down here with you, you lose the tag team championships. 
The gravy train ran dry, Jungle Boy, so here's the thing. It's like the old saying goes, you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. So now I'm gonna have to take control. I'm gonna have to get my hands dirty, and that pisses me off. All right. Last week, this went viral on social media. What you said to his mom and sister. Let's take a look at that footage right now. Let's put it here on the big screen if we can. You raised the piece of You raised the piece Wow. Horrible. Why, why in the world would you say that to ladies at ringside? Listen, Tony. Listen, I was only giving Jungle Boy's mom the chance to apologize to me for giving birth to Jungle Boy. And she instead flipped me off. But here's the thing. Here's why I think she's really mad. I think she saw her knight in shining armor go off into the sunset. I think she was a little sweet on Christian Cage, if you know what I mean. I think she wanted me to be Jungle Boy's father. And here's the thing, I know Jungle Boy, he looked at me like a father figure. He sure did. But here's the thing, Jungle Boy, I never wanted to be your father. I never wanted to be your father figure. You have a father, but your father's dead. Damn. And that's probably a good thing, Jungle Boy, because he would be embarrassed and ashamed to see how you turned out. He'd be embarrassed and ashamed to see you crumpled up like a ball on my feet, refusing to get up and fight back. Here it is, Jungle Boy. Enjoy your early retirement at 25. Stay gone, because if you... All right, just a second. Absolutely classless Whoa. remarks by Chris. Oh, hey, I've been meaning to talk to you. I've been trying to call. Listen, I, listen, listen to me. Listen, I know. Listen, man. hey, hey, we got. What? Come on, man. Hey. Luchasaurus, please let go of me, you're hurting me. You're, you're like a, you're like a son to me. You're like, you're like a son to me. Give me a break. We need to talk, but we need to talk in private. We're not doing it here in front of these people. Luchasaurus can't be buying this. Can't be. He and Jungle Boy have been completely inseparable, and now... Look at this. Makes me sick. So disingenuous is a very talented Christian Cage. A very well-deserved reaction from this Little Caesars arena for Christian Cage after not only the brutal betrayal of Jungle Boy, but the words he had for Jungle Boy on Dynamite last week. Yeah, it was disgusting. It was despicable. I've said some bad things about creative people on TV. I'll tell you what, you can't get much more of a heathen, disgusting, horrible comment. And, and Christian said that he wanted a match, but obviously not dressed to wrestle here tonight. Yeah, that's Tony, point. get to the bottom of this, please. I'm not sure what more you can say than what you said a week ago here, to be honest. Now, Tony. Tony, I was asked by upper management. If you'll just give me a second. I've been asked by upper management to come out here and apologize 
for the insensitive remarks I made last week about Jungle Boy's family, more specifically when I singled out his father. Now, I've never apologized for anything, for anything I've said or done my entire career. That being said, Jungle Boy, I'm sorry, your entire family isn't dead, and they had to witness... What the hell is wrong with that? that is? And they had to witness me end you in that ring two weeks ago on Dynamite. Actually, let me clarify. Everybody in your family, except for your mom, Jungle Boy. I'm beyond the pale, that is... Classy as always, Detroit, classy as always. Listen, the only thing this scumbag city has going for it is that you're close to Canada. Now you Motor City sweat hogs might be wondering why I'm standing out here in street clothes when I requested a match this week. Well, it's simple. I requested a match, but I never said it was for me. <laughs> so here we are on the heels of blood and guts. And I am the cage that everybody is talking about. Now you ignorant pieces of crap think that you deserve to know the reason why I turned my back and I said and did the things that I did to Jungle Boy and his family are now demanding the same answers, wanting to know why Luchasaurus decided to remain aligned with me. Huh? What is this? Wow. Christian, 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 Christian. It's Matt Hardy, my God. Christian Cage, you are unreal. You're like the Michael Jordan of being an asshole. Every time I don't think you can top yourself again, you somehow do. I'll be honest, Jungle Boy was my friend. I got to know him very well these last few months. Jungle Boy trusted you, he respected you, and you screwed him over. He didn't deserve that. No one deserved what you did to Jungle Boy. Hold on a second here, man. Let me, let me, let me get this straight one second here. You, you're, you're gonna sit here and pretend all of a sudden you're buddy buddies with Jungle Boy? Like, you know him the way that I know him, or the way that Luchasaurus knows him? Here's the thing, Matt. You're starting to make your brother sound like the sober one. Oh, for God's sake. There is no depth that Christian Cage oh, will not sink six. Just, somebody should just go unplug his microphone and just ride his ass out of here. you're doing with him you see we've been doing this a long time and the last few years you have left to do this you want to use him to make as much big money as you possibly can hey 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 but I'm not gonna be a hypocrite I'm guilty of it as well I took private party butcher and blaze and I used them and I hate myself for that I regret that time so badly And by a very strange twist of fate, the last month of my life has been upside down. It's been a mess. And maybe, uh, maybe I earned that. Maybe karma's coming to get me. But I'm out here right now to make sure no one else gets taken advantage of. Not him, no one else. No, 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 let me tell you why you're out here, Matt. You're out here because of your massive ego. That's the reason why you're out here, all right? Everybody knows that you're a clout chaser, Matt Hardy. That's what you are. You can't stand when your name isn't in the headlines for more than two seconds, 
right? Yeah. Hey, you use you're everybody this. around you. You'll use you'll use your kids. You'll use your wife, your father-in-law, your dog Sparky, your aunt Ginny, a dilapidated boat, a lawnmower. Hell, you'll even turn a you're blind eye. Come on. You'll even turn a blind eye to your brother and his issues just so you can ride his coattail for one last run. And now you're out here under the guise that you care about Jungle Boy and his family when the fact is, Matt, when the fact is you realize that I am the hottest, most influential star in AEW and you just wanted to be near me. And that, Matt, that is embarrassing, but here's the thing. Your screw-up loser brother isn't even the most embarrassing thing to your family. You are. I think Matt has heard enough, but it's a two-on-one situation here. Oh, the headbutt by Luchasaurus caught Matt Hardy on the corner of the jaw. You see Matt Hardy very dazed, and Luchasaurus oh. just sends Hardy into the steps. And it's pretty obvious, too, that Luchasaurus is going to do whatever the hell Christian Cage says to do to anyone, including Matt Hardy, oh, who's fighting back here. Don't count out Matt Hardy yet, but Luchasaurus, the big uppercut, and... Oh my, oh God, Luchasaurus, oh, the kick with Matt Hardy's head sandwiched between the ring post. Wait, he's not, they're not done here. Christian Cage has given more direction. And Taz, you were right on the money. Luchasaurus is gonna do anything that Christian Cage demands. This is gonna end really bad for Hardy right about now, I'm telling you. The hand on the throw! Oh! I don't know either of you from Adam, but there's something I find extremely annoying about the two of you, the Varsity Blondes. Now, Pillman, it's not even that stupid mullet that you're walking around with, although you'd fit in quite nicely with the imbeciles here in Georgia. Here's the thing, Pillman. Just like Jungle Boy, you had a father. Stop him. But your father was a legend in this business. Legend are other people's words, not mine. In my opinion, Brian Pillman, your father was average at best. He wasn't a walking, living legend, multi-time world heavyweight champion like I am. That being said, I respect the fact that he spilled his blood, sweat, and tears in the middle of that ring. And I'm quite sure he wouldn't mind me speaking on his behalf, saying he'd be, he'd be appalled knowing his final contribution to this business was you. Christian Cage never met a low road he didn't like. Now, Griff, you went on social media this week, and here's the picture. I wasn't sure what annoyed me about it at first, but here's the thing. The hair, the look, the physique, the aura, the athleticism, I couldn't put my finger on it at first, and then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Luchasaurus, does Griff Garrison look like Jungle Boy? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Christian Cage. Has a well-deserved chorus of boos for Christian Cage, who returning to AEW just a few weeks ago, picking up right where he left off with Jungle Boy Jack Perry, oh, yeah. trying, trying to I mean, shorten, if not end, Jack Perry's career as Christian Cage. And there's an obsession that Christian Cage has to you know, get rid of Jungle Boy Jack Perry for sure. He has not missed a step, Christian. I know this man a long time. He's always had a devious dark side to him. But something about Jack Perry really brings it out of oh, this man, Christian Cage. Yeah, there may be no one more cunning, more conniving in AEW or even all of professional wrestling than Christian Cage. Christian, it seemed like after Jungle Boy overcame all odds 
and defeated Luchasaurus at full gear that things would finally be done between you. Yet here we are. What's going on? First things first, the feelings mutual, San Francisco. I can't wait to not come back here for another 10 years. Now, let's not blur the lines of reality here, Renee. For the best, for the better part of the past six months, I embarrassed Jungle Boy and I beat him down at will. I was done with him until I was sitting at home minding my own business and I turn on Dynamite and there's Jack Perry. And what's he have to say? In 2023, he's going to win a singles championship over my dead body. Because I am going to win a singles championship in 2023, and that's a fact. Now, Jack, I've been watching some of your matches the past month or so, and hey, hey, You've been winning a lot of these matches by a quick pinfall or getting a roll up. And if you're okay with winning a championship that, that way, that's fine. But do you want to win a championship or do you want to beat somebody for a championship? Do you want to beat somebody down, break their will and take their title? Now, of course, that's rhetorical, Jungle Boy, because I already know the answer. Because last week when you jumped me from behind like a coward, you had me dead to rights with that concerto and you hesitated. And what happened? I turned it around and I showed you how a real man conducts their business when I smashed your head repeatedly off that chair and left you in a pool of your own blood and piss. Now another thing that's been bothering me and I couldn't put my finger on it till just a few minutes ago, why you want to win this championship so bad and then it hit me like a ton of bricks you don't have any interest of of, of the, the legacy or the or the priority or or the prestige of a championship you just want to take that shiny new toy home and show mommy and show your sister and show your friends make some memes put it on social media get some likes my problem with you and this goes for everybody in this crowd too with you and your whole generation jack is that you treat my business like a video game. You are a dime a dozen. You see me, nobody will say or do or sink to the depths that I will. Nobody can do the things that I can do inside this ring. I, on the other hand, am one of one. And unlike you and your generation treating my business like a video game, I treat my business like an ATM machine and I am not done milking it dry. But this needs to end, Jungle Boy. So I've got a challenge for you this Sunday at Revolution. And it's not for a wrestling match, Jack. No, it's for a fight. No rules, no regulations, just a fight. And the sad reality is, Jack, if you choose to show up, at the end of the day, the reality is you're just your father's son. Because just like your father, just like your father, you're a no-talent hack that should be thankful you got Hollywood good looks to get through life. Because this business is not for you, kid. You don't have the guts. You don't have what it takes. You're not a closer. You don't have any grit. You don't have anything, Jack. You don't have an ounce of what I have inside. Or perhaps there is Christian, the microphone in hand. Now, Baltimore, it's pretty obvious. You're ignorant. You're trash. So keep it down while I conduct some business. Now Wardlow, I could send my right hand of destruction down to that ring and take that TNT championship from you if I wanted it to happen right now. But that's not gonna happen, especially not in Baltimore. Because you see, smart guy, the title shot doesn't belong to him. The title shot belongs to me. Wow, whoa, really? Christian Cage, we know that Wardlow and Arn Anderson are not here tonight, and you have 
really put your fans want to know you put yourself to the number one contender to the TNT championship. They want to know why, how you can do that. First things first, Detroit, you're little. You're literally the worst city in the country, so keep quiet while I conduct my business. So you want to know why, Tony? I am the number one contender for the TNT Championship. It's simple. Because I'm Christian Cage, that's why. When you've compiled the laundry list of accomplishments that I have, you're afforded certain luxuries that other people are not. Like walking into the boss's office and saying, I want the shot. And when your name has the cachet that mine does, you get the shot. Now, I have a question for you, Tony. I have a question for you. All right. What's with all these wrestlers in AEW and their daddy issues? I, I don't know. What do you mean? It's simple. Much like my previous opponent. Much like my previous opponent, my current opponent, Wardlow, also had a father. But let me put your mind at ease, Wardlow. I'm not going to berate your father. I'm not going to go down that path. Because let's face it. Let's face it. Your father wasn't famous. Nobody cares about him. So I'm not going to waste my breath. But here's the thing. It's a, it's a good thing, though, because you found Arn Anderson, right? You found that father figure you were looking for. And lucky for you, it just so happens that Arn was looking for a new son himself. That's right. You may or may not know that Arn Anderson's son, Brock, is under contract and is a wrestler here at AEW. And I'm gonna go out on a limb right now and I'm gonna say that Arn Anderson is nothing more than a bold-faced liar because he said the last thing he wanted to do in this business was to send his son Brock down the right path. He wanted to set him up for success. That is until he looked over his shoulder and saw Wardlow with his brand new TNT championship and he could just throw Brock to the side, hop over to Wardlow and take all that credit, right? But good on you, Wardlow, because now you have that legend steering that ship. Legend are other people's words, not mine. I mean, if you're the other guy in a tag team with Tully Blanchard, I guess that makes you a legend, right? Or if you're a Ric Flair's lap dog for years and years, I guess that makes you a legend, right? Let me ask you a question, Arn. How many times have you won the World Heavyweight Championship? Huh? Well, oh, wait, none, none. I am a multi-time world heavyweight champion. Wardlow, unlike Arn, I understand what it takes. I know what it, I know the struggle, the scratch and claw to reach that mountaintop. So what are you going to do, huh, Wardlow? What are you going to do when you realize your legend is not as smart as me? What are you going to do when you realize your legend is not as cunning as me? What are you going to do when you realize your legend was never as good as me. I'll tell you what you're gonna do. Next week here on Dynamite, you're gonna stand in this ring. I'm gonna walk down this ramp. I'm gonna stare you in your beady eyes. I'm gonna spit in your face, and you're gonna realize that your days as a TNT champion are all but over. And Detroit, and Detroit, kiss my ass. Ask the tough right. questions, Tony. Thanks, guys. You're back home in Toronto, Christian Cage. Here you are. I think you hear the response. You guys were pretty darn excited, especially you were, after that TNT title match. But we go, how you feel being back home? You know, Tony. I left the show last week and I was in a really bad mood. 
for a lot of reasons. But I knew in just a few short days, I would be back in Toronto with the TNT Championship. And now I'm in a worse mood. Oh, please. The moment I stepped off that plane at Pearson International Airport, all the thoughts and emotions kept flooding back. Now, Toronto, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be brutally honest, and I can say it because I'm from here. This city breeds losers, and in turn, in turn, is populated with losers. You are okay with mediocrity? I am not. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but your Toronto Maple Leafs finally win a champion. That didn't happen. On their quest to win a championship, finally win a playoff round after almost 20 years. And what do they do in the second round? They choke. They embarrass themselves. Status quo for Toronto, am I right? The only glimmer of hope you've had is, is in 2019 when the Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship. And that was only because of one man, let's be honest, Kawhi Leonard. Now, Kawhi happens to be a close friend of mine, so I called him up and I'm like, Kawhi, K, babe, what are you doing here? You won a championship in Toronto. Now you're going to carry the burden of these losers' empty lives for the rest of your life. You got to get out of town. That's what I did. I had to leave this city to become a success. I had to leave this city to become a champion. What? Now, speaking of this TNT championship, a couple house cleaning. Shut up while I'm conducting business. Who's the champion? A couple housekeeping items. There will be no more open challenges. They're done. You want a shot at this championship? You got to earn it. You got to fight, scratch, claw the same way that I did. You got to want it the same way that my right hand of destruction did. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I created this title as some vanity project like some other guy that used to travel the roads here in AEW. But I do promise you this. I will take this championship to new heights. I will make this championship the most prestigious and sought after championship in AEW. And I, we will remain the face of TNT now and forever. Throwing down the microphone, disrespecting his home city, Whoa, hold on, hold on. Hold on one second. Oh, wait a second. Mm. We are contractually obligated as the TNT champion to appear in front of the live audience here tonight, but this is taking a little bit too long for my liking. I don't want to spend any more time in New Jersey than I have to. You're called Dirty Jersey for a reason, sweat hogs. So shut your mouth while I conduct business. Now before I go, Punk, I have a, a question for you. What kind of man carries around a championship he didn't win? I think I know the answer, it's fine. Hey, you guys continue just doing whatever it is you're doing. We're gonna hit the bricks, New Jersey. But before we go, just a quick reminder that I, we are the faces of TNT now and forever. And Christian better be careful.
The man that won Royal Rampage just last night, Darby Allen, making his way ringside. Ricky, you know I hate the term pillars. I, I hate it. Not four guys could be the pillar of this company. Anybody who's ride or die with this company is the pillar in my eyes, like my good friend CM Punk. And you two, who, who's the champion? Is it you or is it you? Well, look, it doesn't even matter because that all out, I'm gonna become the new face of TNT. And I'm gonna put some respect back on that championship's name. Because Luchasaurus, when I look at you, all I see is a guy who uh, took too many psychedelics and thinks he's a dinosaur now. <laughs> look, 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 look. I didn't come to Collision to talk. So I got an idea. Why don't we have a little tag match? Me and CM Punk versus Ricky and uh, <laughs> Christian, you don't even wrestle anymore. Uh, give me the TNT champion. <laughs> oh, you're the TNT champion. <laughs> okay. What are you going to do about so, that? Well, well, why don't you be in the tag match tonight? What do you say? Is that a yes? Is that a yes? Okay, guys. I do Darby, Tony <laughs> Khan. Tony Khan has just told me he has made it official for tonight. It will be Ricky Starks, Luchasaurus, or Christian Cage. It's going to be Christian Cage against the team of Darby Allen and CM Punk tonight. Wow, what a See tag tonight, team champ. Out. What a huge main event made for tonight on Collision. Now, as the TNT champion, I, we don't expect, we demand respect. Whether it's from each and every one of you sitting in this audience wishing you were me, or whether it's all the wrestlers in the back wishing they were me, But lately, I felt a little disrespected by one Darby Allen. Now, Darby, I've already told you this, and now I'm repeating myself. As long as this TNT championship is in my possession, you will never touch it again. Do you understand me? Now I know you've gone on record saying how important this championship is to you. I don't care about that, Darby. I really don't care. Now listen, I also heard you say that you paint half your face because you're 50% dead inside. Now when you're too busy doing kickflips and ollies on your skateboard, I'm building a legacy. Do you understand me? And if you keep pursuing my TNT championship, I'll give you that other 50% and make sure you get the rest of the way there. You want to be a hero, Darby. You want to be a hero so bad, come after this TNT championship and I will write you a tragedy. That's about enough. Wait a second. That's on Anderson. It sure is, and he's not alone. This is not our Darby Allen. I'm not Darby Allen. We're the Andersons. They know us around here, right, guys? And this is Greensboro, North Carolina. Take a bow. This is hallowed ground in professional wrestling. Matter of fact, if I remember right, this is horseman country. Yeah. 
Now, before we get too much further into this, I would like to just point out something to the sea monster to your left. <laughs> the giant lizard. Breaking news. You're the champion, not him. You know what, you know what, you know what, Arn? It's funny that we're in Greensboro. And listen, I know you've had many, many legendary moments in this arena. You have. But don't forget, the most relevant you've been in the last 15 years is when I left you in a pool of your own blood a couple months ago. What happened, huh? What happened? You woke up this morning, you woke up this morning and you jumped in, you jumped in the fountain of youth? Well, maybe you should have taken a few laps while you were in there, huh? And now you, you're gonna step to me? You're gonna step to the TNT champion? Listen, I said no more open challenges, but if you want to step in this ring, I'd be willing to make an exception for you. <laughs> Swerving Nana laughing. <laughs> Who's, who's it going to be? Wait, I hear the... Oh! The self-styled TNT champion, Christian you Cage. You guys shouldn't look so surprised. The true greats are always two steps ahead. Ain't that right, Stinger? And the actual TNT champion, Darby Luchasaurus. Sting. Are you going to introduce me to your little friend? Yes. I think I know who this guy is. I heard a lot about you. Nick Wayne. It's nice to meet you in person, finally, Nick. I've heard a lot about you. I heard about your story, and I understand that you have a father. Oh, no. Don't, don't and go. your father is dead. Christian, get rid of him. Can we get rid of I also understand that your father was a professional wrestler. Well, I've never heard of your father, Buddy Wayne, before, so he must not have been very good. Buddy Wayne's the man that trained Darby Allen. The good Allen. news for you, though, Nick, is that because your father was such a talentless hack, you don't have a lot to live up to. And if I were you... I'd steer clear of Wembley Stadium this Sunday because I'd hate for you to have deja vu and watch that coffin door close on someone you love for the second time in your young life. All right, this is enough, man. This Absolutely is tasteful. But hey, Nick, hey. Just a, just a. But Nick. If you play your cards right, kid. If you play your cards right, kid, I'll be there to mentor you when it's all over because we all know that every fatherless child needs a true mentor and there's no... Keep it down while I'm conducting business! There's no better mentor than the TNT champion.